Andrea Palladino of Il Fatto Quotidiano, an Italian investigative journalist and researcher, has come to the city of Amantea, Calabria, to visit the site where in 1990 a mysterious ship washed ashore without its crew. The stormy seas on the 14th of December 1990 pushed the roll-on, roll-off cargo ship, Rosso, onto the beach of Formicike, just south of Amantea. It was on its way from Malta to La Spezia. In this unique footage shot by a local police officer, the ship is still at the mercy of the waves. What was aboard the ship when it was abandoned by the crew may never be known, as a conspiracy of silence surrounds the disposal of toxic waste in Italy in the 1980s and 90s, a conspiracy that has claimed at least two lives. It is a moral crisis that still affects Italy and the Mediterranean today. What is important, also out of respect for a journalist colleague who died following this lead, is to demand the truth always and relentlessly with regards to this traffic. Today, and I have to say this with sadness, we have only repentant informers from within the Camorra. There is not a single industrialist who has admitted to a crime. If these ships, or even just a few of these ships, actually do contain radioactive material, or dangerous toxic materials as they used to call it, they are ticking time bombs. From Calabria to Naples, the story of the illegal disposal of toxic waste is one of the darkest pages in the history of Italian and European industrial development. The small Calabrian town on the Tyrrhenian coastline was the scene of one of the most extraordinary shipwrecks of the time. On the 14th of December 1990, the MV Rosso was on the home leg of a journey from Marina di Carrara to Malta and back to La Spezia, when it ran into trouble and began taking on water. The crew was winched off, but 11 hours later, it was washed up onto the beach here. The ship had a sinister story. At the end of 1989, the Jolly Rosso leaves for Beirut in the Lebanon and was going to pick up dangerous waste, Italian waste, produced by Italian industry, that had been brought there a few months previously, a year and a half previously, illegally, according to the Lebanese government, and left near Beirut, in a suburb of Beirut. The salvage company Smith was called in with a tug to try to pull the Rosso off the shore, but this proved impossible. Over the next year, the ship was broken up on the beach by a local company. What the Rosso was carrying and why the crew abandoned it, although not in danger of sinking, has become part of the wider investigation into the clandestine toxic ships. There is some evidence that the residues from the Rosso, ex Jolly Rosso, were found in the area of the River Oliva. Another train station, another mystery. Cape Spartivento is where Andrea Palladino has come to meet an old friend, a veteran of the case of the Mediterranean's toxic ships. The inquiry eventually brought here Nuccio Barilla, today Secretary General of the Lega Ambiente Conservationist Organization. This is where the Tyrrhenian and Ionian seas meet, where the sea floor is more than a thousand meters deep a perfect place to hide a toxic ship. The ship's name was Regal, and records show it sank on the 21st of September 1987. A cloak of mystery still surrounds it, despite years of investigations set off by an informer of the Lega Ambiente. In 1994, we came across a story that was strange, weird, unique. And as the National Observatory for Legality and as the Reggio Calabria section of the Legambiente, 
we presented a complaint to the prefecture of Reggio Calabria, a small prefecture, on the basis of information we have received. The informer told the activists that the local mafia, the Andrangheta, was carrying toxic waste from ships that docked in Calabria to be hidden in the caves of Aspromonte, the wild mountain range of Calabria. The complex and wide-ranging investigation met with institutional hostility and cover-ups. Still today, the rivers and sea in the area present worrying signs of radioactivity. What has been established is that this sea has significant contamination of heavy metals and cesium-187, and this has been established in analysis done by Italian environmental agencies. Far to the north of Italy, journalist Sondra Coggio has battled for decades to shed light on waste trafficking in the La Spezia area, both in the local landfills and in ships sailing from the port. Calabria is perfect because it had a very deep sea floor with undersea canyons and has natural mineralogical characteristics, such that radars will always identify base radioactivity. This has been explained to me by several sources that, without wishing to name them, spoke to me about it. Just 20 minutes by car from La Spezia is the port of Marina di Carrara, specialized in loading marble from the most famous marble quarries in the world. Many of the mystery ships left either La Spezia or this port. Marble dust is heavy and known to mask radioactivity. At that time, for example, the contribution of the forestry police of Brescia was decisive and extremely important. The forestry police of Brescia that was already investigating these ships, and it was thanks to indications by the forestry police of Brescia that pointed to one of the ships that occupied us most over the years, the Rigel. If the Rigel is the earliest documented toxic ship in Calabria, the Rosso raised investigators' suspicions years after it washed up on the Calabrian coast. This incredible footage of the Rosso shows it empty. The remains of a cargo of tobacco is spread around the hold, and much of it has fallen into the sea and washed up on the shoreline. The outside of the ship has been damaged by an attempt by another ship to tow it before it reached the beach. Another fact that has been proven is that a few kilometers away, on the River Oliva, investigators found industrial waste that was stocked. How can I describe it? Not simply abandoned barrels near a river. No, these were stocked in a reinforced concrete sarcophagus. So, with a method that goes beyond the simple illegal waste disposal that, unfortunately, is characteristic of southern Italy. The mystery of the Rosso is emblematic of the story of the toxic ships. There is a wide hole cut in its side to provide access to the hold. The hold seems empty, and yet this film in itself holds an enigma. Only an expert could fully understand the mystery of the toxic ships. One of the key players in the investigation was a Coast Guard captain, Natale de Grazia, who brought his technical knowledge of commercial shipping to the table. He was a close personal friend of Nuccio Barilà. I knew Natale de Grazia as a youth, in the quarter we lived in, in the playing fields of Gallico Marina. Then I met him again as a young officer of the Coast Guard. He became our reference in the 1980s for the environmental battles we were fighting. Andrea Palladino wrote a book about the global aspects of toxic waste disposal with a colleague, Sandro Mattioli, who lives and works in Berlin. During the research for the book, it quickly revealed that the waste problem was actually not waste being brought to Germany, but rather waste that was being disposed of down to Italy as well as to Africa in the past. 
So on this theme, my friend and colleague Andrea Palandido and I, we researched for a long time, and this is how the book came about. The economic boom of the 1970s and 80s led to the growth of production of industrial waste in quantities and of types that had never been seen before. In Europe, there are no less than 100 nuclear electricity generating plants. In 1986, the Chernobyl disaster showed the risk the world was running with nuclear energy. Then there are the hospitals, which use hundreds of kilos of toxic X-ray material every year, not to mention chemical and petrochemical plants. Stocking or destroying radioactive waste that takes thousands of years to break down was becoming a nightmare for Europe. In the 1980s, the Nuclear Energy Agency developed a research project on the shores of Lake Maggiore between Italy and Switzerland to test whether heavy torpedoes, free-falling penetrators, could be literally dropped at high speed into the muddy floor of the world's seas, so deep that they would do no harm to anyone. The project was abandoned in 1987, and in 1993 the solution was officially banned by the London Convention. Di questo progetto si impossessò uno this project fell into the hands of a certain Giorgio Comerio, who set up a company, the ODM, Oceanic Disposal Management, and together with others who gravitated in the area of waste disposal, with contacts with foreign states and so forth, took the project forward privately. In May 1995, the forestry police, together with Captain De Grazia and the Carabinieri, searched the home of Giorgio Comerio, the entrepreneur whose plan it was to sink radioactive waste in the seabed. They find several items and some diaries that are among the evidence of the inquiry and in the materials handed over to the Parliamentary Commission. And on the page of the 21st of September 1987, there's a phrase which reads, Lost the ship. Captain de Grazia notes that from his own research that the only ship to sink on that day was the Regal. Personalmente ho partecipato con un gruppo di giovani volonterosi amici. Abbiamo deciso di investire tempo e denaro per realizzare un progetto e un'ipotesi di fattibilità ingegneristica. The Regal allegedly sank on the 21st of September 1987, off the coast at Cape Spartivento. It was the subject of a court action brought by Britain's insurance brokers Lloyds, who refused to pay compensation because they suspected the ship had been scuttled. At the time, customs officers in La Spezia, the port it had departed from, had suspected the ship owners of smuggling and had tapped their phones. Phone taps were useful because they used code words to announce the sinking of the Rigel using code words that became famous. The child is born, he's a boy, this morning at dawn. The wiretaps done at the time revealed some dialogue of the crew, at times fairly raw, where they would say, oh, this time the cargo is really shit. Sorry for the term, but they used it to say, this was not your usual cargo. It was a particular cargo. 